Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video is a continuation of my last video about complex PTSD and just kind of like more about the symptoms and stuff. I noticed that one of the things that happens often is shutting down and I'm talking like shutting down when you are in a conflict. So whether it's like an internal conflict or like um, an external conflict, let's say I'm in a fight with somebody, what happens is I, I shut down and that triggers the emotional flashbacks. So I kind of wanted to show what happens in that situation. So here's my little reenactment. I'm going to use like my hands, right? So we're fighting, whatever. And then this person says something that I've heard before from somebody else or triggers a memory of something that happened to me before. So now this person's talking and all of a sudden I've closed in because what happens is whatever they said like whether it was a sentence a phrase or something about my personality it led me to a memory so my brain now is going right towards that memory and i'm stuck there i'm thinking about that memory i'm thinking about what was said to me how i felt in that moment and i start to experience every feeling and emotion from that memory so this person is still talking and i'm living in my past and I'm experiencing the disgust feeling, the feeling of like, I'm worthless, I'm nothing. People don't love me, I'm unlovable, look what I do to people. Because I'm, I'm still watching what's happening. And I'm still experiencing what's happening inside. So then the more that the person talks and the more that different thoughts are created, the more that those thoughts lead me to different memories. So now I'm kind of like stuck in this time loop. And I'm stuck in like this reality as a stone cold wall just being yelled at and this reality as like a hypersensitive reality that's being warped with my reality now. Now it feels so real but it's actually a warped version of it where it's using like past thoughts and past feelings and emotions to dictate how I feel now and to reaffirm like thoughts and horrible feelings that I have. I go mute sometimes, like a lot of the times I'll just be sitting there and then the person's like, well, why can't you say anything? And which triggers like more feelings. Um, and then I'm just kind of like stuck in a past loop basically. And I have so much hatred for myself and so much anger. And I just want to tell myself like, just say something, right? Like, just say anything. Like, why can't you defend yourself? Why can't you, like, explain how you're feeling? And it's because that what happens is with complex PTSD is that protection. You always want to protect yourself, even if that means not speaking up, because you want to protect that part of yourself and what you're experiencing, right? Because, like, complex PTSD, a lot of it stems from childhood and abuse or neglect in your childhood. It's really hard for you to find compassion for yourself and to actually be there for yourself when you're experiencing it. So it's like there's conflict happening on the outside and then there's so much conflict happening on the inside. And complex PTSD, I always say it's like, it's so lonely because it's like you're constantly walking on eggshells with your own self. So you kind of do separate from yourself, but you also separate from your reality and you separate and detach from the people around you as well. A lot of the times I'll experience detachment to the situation, detachment to myself and um, detachment to reality in general. And it leads me into like a very dissociative state. So um, where I'm kind of just watching my life pass by and I'm, I'm trying, like my head is like, see, like you're never able to, get past these things you'll you'll never be able to like reach these goals or whatever um or like I'll be in a situation with somebody and I'm like just speak like I could be really good friends with this person but my brain is like no 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 um so it's very isolating to feel these ways because it's like your own kind of platter of trauma was handed to you and you didn't know how to regulate yourself to be able to deal with it. So you feel like nobody else has experienced what you've experienced. experienced. And it's true because nobody ha was handed the exact same platter as you and nobody dealt with it the exact same way as you, right? People that have complex PTSD know what it's like to live in that constant survival mode and to feel so lonely and isolated and to feel like people don't want to be in our lives or we're too much for people. So 
when it comes to like accepting or opening up to other people or even accepting and opening up to ourselves completely it's very scary because we don't want to feel worse than we already feel it's like we don't feel like we fit in anywhere we feel like we don't even have a home and um we're always quite trying to look for a home outside of ourselves like one of the things that i used to do when i was younger is i i would always say like i just want to go home even though like i was home do you know what i mean like i i never felt secure or safe in any place that i ever was and i was always super like hyper vigilant about everything it, it's not to say that i had like a loveless childhood or anything it's just that um i feel like there was a lot of things that a lot of situations where i felt very misunderstood and kind of like people were filling in the blanks for me so how i truly felt um was never fully expressed and i held a lot of that resentment inside with the like with the whole talk about uh you know the emotional flashbacks and um kind of like going inwards um develops like toxic shame and toxic shame is like one of the most debilitating parts of it because you're constantly feeling guilt and you're constantly feeling shame for who you are as a person how you react to things the things that happen to you and uh, it's constantly like basically feeling like it's your fault and like um like you deserved all of that i'm having so much of this toxic insecurity and these intrusive thoughts um basically consume who i am and it's scary and it's like i don't know it's just it's very isolating i like i know that other people experience it but when you're in it, like, you don't feel like other people experience it. I don't know how to describe it. And a lot of the times, we are internally viewing our whole entire lives. It's kind of like we're watching our life pass us by and seeing all the opportunities where we could have been different, but we chose not to because subconsciously, for some reason, we feel like we deserve this kind of reality and we don't deserve to have any kind of change or positivity come into our lives. So, yeah. I think that's what I'm going to talk about in terms of complex PTSD and maybe I'll make, I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm literally like uh, rubbing my carpet. It feels so good. Oh, this carpet feels so nice. Oh, so soothing. But yeah, like I said before, if you guys want to message me, um, message me on my Instagram. I do get messages now, which is so exciting because this is all I've ever wanted. Um, and just a reminder, like, you know, like I said in my last video, don't beat yourself up for how you feel. You've never felt secure. You've never felt that, like, we're able to feel that compassion for yourself. And maybe you took that out on other people. But that's normal because it's something that you experienced, right? Um, how you feel is always valid. It's when it starts to affect you um, and affect the people around you that you need to, like, kind of take a look at it and just understand and go deeper into why you're feeling that way um i do have another book recommendation i forgot to recommend it last time hold on this one though i would say like if you have a therapist kind of do it with them it's called heal, heal your inner wounds it actually like makes you deep dive into your traumas and like your childhood your teenage years everything and then at the end it has like little rituals that you can do to like send off your teenage self and I think those parts are fun. Um, I was actually going to do a series about that. I'll talk about it next time. It's an inner child series. It's going to be really fun. Anyways. Um, but yeah. And also have a little support buddy. This is mine. Jimmy Noam Chur. Love him. Um, he's really cool. Oh, I love you. I love you. I like little things. Like They're very comforting for me. Um, and sometimes if I'm having a breakdown, I will grab a little and just be like, and so it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's like having, like, being able to take care of your inner child and just relaxing them. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Love you. Bye.